Yeah. Hello, Irvin. Thank you for having me here. So as uh, Ashit mentioned, I'm, work, I'm, I'm local. I work for h.ai. And today I'm going to share my uh, recent experience with non-local Kaggle competitions. So um, yeah, uh, so it was an Airbus ship detection competition. And if you go to the description of the data, it was fairly simple, right? You've been asked to find out and identify ships on a satellite images. So basically, it's a segmentation problem. So you need to, your model actually need to associate each pixel on a picture or like, you know, with a specific class. In our case, it should be like a background, no ship, and a foreground, which is actually, make, make, uh, actually means a ship. Uh, there is a couple of uh, interesting things about the data. So basically, the size of the ships actually varies a lot from a, you know, air carrier, like on a picture on the left, to small, some, some small uh, boats, you know, you can find like on any port. Also, in some cases, you have uh, uh, two ships close together, so it's actually kind of hard to identify where one ship ends and another ship starts. And so, yeah. It was a pretty long competition with an interesting history. Unfortunately, I joined kind of late in, in, in this competition, so I have no idea what actually happened. But I found out there is actually a leak found in the data when they first released the data. So they have to restart the competition uh, from, from, you know, from scratch. And they did it actually combining the previous train and test data into the new test uh, train data and releasing additional test data uh, to, to, so you can actually score it. So the evaluation metric was F2 score, but it was an average F2 uh, over the set of thresholds. So basically this metric is actually able to identify, you know, um, uh, how good your prediction in terms of a uh, uh, false negative to the versus uh, true positives. So uh, again, the data set was a, a set of images. Each image was 768 by 768 satellite images. Uh, you have almost 200,000 images for train, 15,000 for uh, test. And I'm, I'm sorry, I think you, it's kind of hard to see, but on the, on the right side of the slide, you can actually see the very same ship represented in, in train set over and over again. So that means in our train data, we have a lot of duplicates. And if you want to build a right model, actually, in the right validation for a model, we have to make sure uh, all the same ships should go to the same fold. So let's say if you use one ship for training, you should be make sure all the examples of the very same pictures will go to the train. Or if you're going to say to use the, uh, the group of ships to the validation, you have to make sure all the same ships go to validation. So, uh, so question number one, how we should identify these duplicates? Well, and it uh, turns out to be pretty easy. We can use actually masks to do that. So, and masks actually in this competition was presented using a run length encoding schema. So it's a quite uh, easy schema basically. You know, if you have a binary image, when the zero, one is a, your mask and zero is a, is a background, you can represent this image as a, as a set of pair of numbers. Then the first number actually indicate position so basically, imagine yourself, you turn your 2D image into the long string, right? And you find the first position, position and then you say how much pixel is once after that position. So the next number indicates amount of pixels. That means if we remove information about position from our data, we basically store only the shape of the ship. And that means we can actually try to compare these shape, sh uh, shapes across the whole train set to find the the ships which have the ships which has exactly the same shape. That's how we actually we're able to find the duplicates. Like an example you see below, we're able to identify the next picture which can, contains exactly the same air carrier, but with a uh, with a, some shift in the data. All right, now we're able to identify all the same pictures. We group them together, and now we actually can split our data on different folds for training validation. What else we did? We decided to remove all empty mask from the train from the train set completely. We kind of thought it can, 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 can help us to increase the training speed. We also split the train data set into 10 folds based on the number of ships and the ship size. So we done it by basically sorting the number of ships in the data set and information about number of ships and number of pixels in ascending order and assigning basically a number from one to 10. And we use number 10 as a validation, basically, to, to, to store for validation while number from 1 to 9 to, as, as I was training set. So 
as a deep learning framework, I decided, we decided to use Keras and TensorFlow. Main reason, because I have a lot of uh, code base for that, and I'm kind of more familiar with Keras compared to PyTorch. Uh, obviously, because it's a pretty huge data set, we decided to use a data generators, and actually you can find a nice tutorial how to use data generator on Keras, and, and a link provided. Also, yes, you can, you, you actually, if you want to, you can uh, run your segmentation model from scratch, but there is a nice package by Pavel Yakubovsky who actually did it for you. And it's, avail and it's available online on GitHub, you can actually use it. It came with a pre-trained uh, encoder models, so with so-called backbones. So basically you can use a pre-trained uh, pre encoder based on, on pretend ImageNet as your encoder. And not, so in, in, order, in order to not to start from scratch, which kind of helps and speed up the, 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 the training process. In the code below, basically, you can see the code snipping, which basically provides the whole stuff done for, that's basically everything I done for architectural search. I just call the function and I get my model out of, the, out of, the, out of, this, of this nice package. So there is a couple of additional information of a, a network architecture should being chosen. It's a feature primitive network. It's been introduced, uh, well, kind of almost two years ago by Facebook AI research team. And the main uh, difference compared to UNET, for example, in this architecture, you're trying to predict the mask on each level of your, of your, uh, of your pyramid. So again, in overall approach, uh, this, the images have qu are quite big. So 7, 768 by 768, it's quite a huge image actually for neural nets. And that means you won't be able to fit a lot of images in one batch. That means it's kind of, you know, slow the trainings pretty significantly. So instead of providing the full image for training, we were going to provide the random crops by two, two, uh, 256 by 256. But at the same time, because it's a, it's a fully convolutional neural net, at the training, and on, sorry, on a test and validation step, we will actually feed up the complete full image to get the predictions out. That approach helps us to basically to fit more images into, into, into the batch, so that actually will be that, that actually stabilizes things significantly. Uh, on the first run, we decided to do early stop and approach by utilizing a couple of Keras callbacks. We use Adam as optimizer across the whole training process. Uh, we use uh, our own defined loss function, which actually a combination of uh, binary cross entropy and Jacquard distance. But uh, for Jacquard distance, we actually apply additional weights, so we kind of five, it uh, should impact five times more compared to binary cross entropy. Uh, using this approach, our training stops on 51st epoch. And the leaderboard's core results was quite bad. We actually, it, this, this submit actually ended up on being like 500 something out of 800 people. Okay, so we can do what we can do next. Well, we can apply image augmentation. So basically, you, instead of training on, on a only available images, you can actually can augment these images to, to kind of virtually increase the size of the data set you have. And there's a nice library called Albumentation. It's written by uh, a team of uh, data scientists who work with, with uh, computer, computer vision. And I think they started actually writing it uh, because they, we, be, they've been high, heavily involved in the Kaggle competitions and they decided they, have a need, they need a tool actually, you know, which basically helps them to augment image on the fly. So, for our task, we apply pretty, pretty tough, I would say, like image augmentation. To, you can see a couple of examples, you know. So we're actually we can, we're applying like a, we can randomly add Gaussian noise. We actually can play with a, a color levels and et cetera, et cetera. We can shift, rotate images. We can scale them. And after all this, uh, Augmentation applied, the training stopped actually in 44 epochs, but the leaderboard score actually got worse. So that's kind of was discouraging, to be honest. So we decided to do, you know what, probably because we do random cropping actually, we kind of not always have a ships in our crop. And because we decided, you know, all our um, examples supposed to have a ship on a, on a, on a so supposed to have a ship presented, we decided to improve our random crops to make, and may adjust them to make sure there is always a ship on our on provided example. So we did it. We adjust our crop sampling. Training stop on a 30th, 35th epochs. 
but leaderboard score, leaderboard scores got even worse. So like, okay, we do pretty complex stuff, right? I, we're pretty sure we did, we pick up the right network. I mean, it's a, it's a Facebook AI research anyway, so it's, it should be fine, right? So what we did wrong? On a forum, actually, I learned, you know what, uh, sometimes network can be actually uh, better than predicting the small ships. So we decided to remove any small mask which less than 50 pixels. That's kind of improve our score, but still, it's way much worse compared to our previous model. Uh, it's time to check actually our, 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 our logs, how our actually model been trained. And we found out actually there's a significant difference between losses from, between a train loss and a, and a, tra and a test loss. So basically, models, model actually showed a sign of underfitting. So basically, the training was stopped way build before actually model actually learned a lot about the data. So we decided to change the training schema. And instead of using a, a, a reducing learning rate on a plateau, we decided to use a cycle learning rate. And the idea is quite simple. You can see it on the on left, on the left, sorry, on the left plot, basically. We slowly change in our learning rate through epoch, you know, over and over again. And for our, for our particular, uh, for this particular example, we actually changed it a lot. We changed it from a, you know, one million to one thousandth. And we did this change, you know, like almost two times for the one epoch. Because the, the red uh, vertical lines actually indicates the, the epoch. And as you can see on the plot on the right, we still actually, uh, you see the, 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 the blue line basically is a training loss, while the, the orange line is a, is, is a validation loss. And because the training loss is still like high above a validation loss, it might be the sign of uh, underfitting as well. So we trained for 200 epochs, and we decided to train it for another 200 epochs after that. So it gave us a 400 epochs at the, at, at the end. Still, some sign of the underfitting. Uh, so we decided to apply a test time augmentation to prove our score. And test time augmentation is a pretty simple idea. So basically, you, you augment your image you know, by, by simply rotating it, maybe like mirroring the image. And then you feed all this augmented, augmented image of one example into your neural net, and you just average the masks, average the results of the, of the, of the predictions from a neural net. So we did that. To remind you, we trained our model for 400 epochs, which actually took us about more than a day. Uh, but the results was even worse than compared to like even simple model. So clearly, we, we are doing something wrong. Like, to recap, we have FPN network. We do image augmentation. We train for 400 epochs. That's a lot. We do image augmentation on test time. We remove small ships, less than 50 pixels. And the results still look terrible. So after looking at predicted mask, actually, I realized there is a lot of false positives. So that actually means our idea of removing empty mask was actually a terrible idea. We have to actually show it to network so it actually realize, you know, there is, uh, there is uh, some cases there is no shape available because it actually was, it was making a mistake, you know, predicting the shape of the wave, for example, as a ship. So we reduce a uh, percent of image with mask in our batch to 30% just to try to fight with a false positive rate. We trained this network for another 15 epochs, and the results were significantly better. We end up in a 16th place immediately. Okay, so what should we do next? Let's train it again for another 15 epochs, and the results get even better. And again for 15 epochs, and it's even better. And it's time for another trick. Let's wait, let's average our weights for the network. Idea is quite simple. You take in, let's say you train your model for uh, and epochs, right? You're just, taking, you're just taking the last snapshot of your train, of your, of, of your weights, for, of your network. You just average them together, and that's going to be your new weights for your, for your, for your neural net. And with averaging and another train for another 15 epochs, we get to 27th place. And what next? Well, unfortunately, time is up. Competition is over. So luckily for us, uh, our 27th place on a public leaderboard actually was a 16th place in a private leaderboard. So actually it was a shakeup, but uh, actually we, we benefit from this shakeup. Uh, to summarize, the model was just basically single neural net while our competitors used actually ensemble of several uh, units models. We trained it using a 
cycle learning rate, image augmentation, or crops. We trained for 600 epochs with a batch size of 48. It took us two NVIDIA GPU cards, one Intel CPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and 65 hours to train. Well, after competition ended, actually, I kind of adjusted the, the, the learning schedule. It actually, we can end, end up in 300 epochs, so it's like twice less amount of time. Okay, so competition is ended, but it's kind of interesting what else we can do. And actually, was the one trick actually left. We didn't have enough time to implement it. It's called pseudo-labeling. Idea is simple. You take in your prediction from a test set and you use these predicted values as a additional data to your train set. Well, of course, you have to do it carefully. So we just we pick up the most confident prediction from our test set, like about 1.5K. Um, also, because all mask in the data set was basically a rectangular shape, we, for some of these images actually, uh, which is, has a bigger area because bigger ships is easier to predict, we replace the predicted mask with a rectangular. But we have also control, you know, the, 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 that area, the difference on areas between the mask and a rectangular should be less than 5%. So we add them to training set and sample them from, for each epoch. Ideally, you should train your network from scratch, but we actually use our pre-trained network with after 400 epochs. And we train for now, I think, like 100, and our private leaderboard score got like to 11th place, which is basically a gold place. But it was after the competition ended, so who cares? Uh, the, our team actually tried to implement mask RCNN, and it worked for them. What I like, actually, one of the team actually was quite smart, and they apply an extra channel on the mask. Because uh, the model actually was kind of struggling to identify the borders, we decided to provide the borders as a second channel. And in some cases, because model actually uh, had difficulties identifying you know, the split between the two ships which close together, they provide this, uh, this, this line basically as a third channel. No idea how exactly we done that actually, so I don't have any information about technical realization. But lesson learned. Because it's all about lesson learned. Well, visualize. It's a computer vision competition after all, so you have to visualize your data always, I mean always basically, like must. I kind of lazy doing that, but I had to. Well, you don't have to implement your, everything yourself if you compete in basic on Calgary competitions. Like be the one who stands on the shoulder of giants, right? As an example, the offer of a segmentation model package who I actually used to basically to form my model, finished within the very same competition and 44th place. So pretty good results. Uh, obviously, validation schema is a, is a key factor so to success in anywhere, not just on the Kaggle competitions, obviously, but on the, on the, in the real life scenario as well. Safe network weights, always. Make sure you actually know at which point you're exactly going to, to save them because that actually allows you to return back to, 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 to the previous step. Well, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Casually, uh, that's exactly why I'm showing you, you know, the whole process actually how we made a lot of significant mistakes actually before we actually find the, the, the right thing to do. Because usual Kaggle rate is like 99 mistakes in, in, to, to one insight. Well, and keep, keep going on. No matter what's terrible, how terrible is your results, believe in yourself, like continue, you know, to, to f never give up, basically. Like, for example, in an example I provided to you, right, I show you basically a nine submissions, but in a real life, actually, we've made uh, 92. So there is a lot of mistakes done. 92 is submissions, basically. We've done everything wrong except this one particular found schema. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Dimitri. Um, we have time for one question. So. Every, yes, please. Why did you use uh, 10 folds for your cross validation? Uh, well, in that case, because I don't want to, have, uh, to spend a lot of data on a validation, right? So, and it's a pretty big data set. So, so 10 folds give me like a 20k examples as a validation, which is actually even more than a train set has, because train has set just like 15k examples. So that's basically the main reason. To have more data to train compared to, to, to the rest. Thanks, Dimitri. Sure. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys.